Did you know that I sculpted David from a block of marble discarded by other artists? I am Michelangelo, creator of the Sistine Chapel. However, not everything was bright. I faced the intense pressure from the church and the demands of Pope Julius II. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I was born in Florence in 1475 into a family of modest means. From a very young age, my inclination towards art was evident. At 13, I became an apprentice to the painter Ghirlandaio, where I learned the fundamentals of fresco painting. Later, I was taken under the wing of Lorenzo de' Medici, who introduced me to the flourishing world of Renaissance humanism. In these circles, I studied sculpture under the guidance of Bertoldo di Giovanni and immersed myself in classical culture, admiring and studying ancient statues. These early years were pivotal as I became infused with the passion and enthusiasm that I would later express in my masterpieces. Regarding my love life, it was always a topic of speculation. There was talk of my sonnets to Tommaso dei Cavalieri, a nobleman much younger than I, to whom I expressed deep admiration and affection. However, my dedication to art was so consuming that it rarely left room for other distractions. The beauty I pursued was, above all, in marble and canvas. This burning passion would guide me throughout my life, shaping my destiny as an artist. One of my most iconic achievements is undoubtedly the sculpture of David. When I was proposed to work on a massive block of marble that had been discarded by other sculptors, I saw the challenge as an opportunity. The magnitude of this project was overwhelming, yet I always had a clear vision of what I wanted to achieve. I worked on David between 1501 and 1504, and with every chisel stroke I freed the imposing and perfect form hidden within the marble. Interestingly, despite its massive size, the details are precise, from the veins in his hands to the tension on his face. Another monumental work is the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Pope Julius II commissioned me to paint the ceiling in 1508, though I was initially hesitant as I considered myself more of a sculptor than a painter. But I accepted the challenge. For four years I worked on scaffolds, sometimes in awkward positions, to create the frescoes depicting biblical stories. The final result includes over 300 figures with the scene of the creation of Adam, perhaps being the most recognized. It's curious to think that, throughout the process, I often complained about physical pains and the pressures of the job, but the outcome was an unparalleled masterpiece. The Pieta is another one of my great achievements. Characterized by its exquisite portrayal of pain and love, it's the only work I signed. I embedded my name on the sash crossing the Virgin's chest, a testament to my deep pride and connection with the sculpture. These works, among many others, reflect my relentless pursuit of perfection and balance in art, and are a testament to a life dedicated to beauty and the expression of the human spirit. As the years went on, the weight of life and art began to weigh on me. The same dedication I put into my works, the same hands that sculpted wonders, began to betray me. In my later years, I suffered intense pains, the result of decades of incessant labor and forced postures while working. The world I so loved, the art, became a physical torment. My love life, always shrouded in mystery, accentuated my sense of loneliness in my final days. Despite the conjectures about my relationships, the truth is, I was always more in love with art than with any human being. This passion, while giving me the greatest achievements, was also my biggest challenge. Finally, in 1564 in Rome, at the age of 88, I left this world. While many would see this as an advanced age, for me, it was an abrupt goodbye. So many projects and visions still burned in my mind, but my body could no longer keep pace. Nevertheless, if there's anything I learned on my journey, it's that true immortality lies in what we leave behind. My works, from David to the Sistine Chapel, are living testimonials of a spirit that never surrendered to adversity and that sought beauty and perfection to the last breath. I hope my story inspires you to continue exploring the lives of those who have left indelible marks on our history. Don't forget to subscribe and keep discovering more about figures who changed the course of humanity. And tell me, which other important individuals would you like to know more about in their lives? Comment and share your thoughts.